One of the most important points besides true love in marriage is that the partners are always helpful to each other in all things and situations. To help and support one another and to be lenient and sincere towards each other means to cultivate a shared right and care for each other in mutual reverence. One can be extraordinarily happy when one simply rests and consciously perceives peace, love, and all forms of existence and appreciates everything joyously. Everything you do for yourself, you also do for others. And everything you do for others, you also do for yourself. This is the creational, natural law of reciprocity and the inseparable interconnectedness of all things. If partners in a relationship do not know themselves and each other well enough, and do not resolve their inner conflicts, do not control their desires, hopes, wishes, and do not eliminate their bad habits, and do not resolve their tangled knots between reality and unreality, then the relationship is doomed to fail from the start. One must consciously practice and constantly examine one's own thinking and feeling to learn to control the wildest emotions in even the most difficult situations and moments. If one has no love, harmony, and freedom in oneself, as well as no joy and no freedom, then all of these high values cannot be shared with other people. The more man feels true love within himself and lives according to it, the more he wants to act and let his fellow human beings feel this love. However, untrue love, which comes about only through thoughts and feelings, is not able to do this and cannot be recognized as love in its emotional behavior. True love is the path to the true creational. To truly live means to see and accept every moment of existence as the highest focal point of being, to live and be happy with it, to feel comfortable, and enjoy it in harmony, peace, and freedom. If one feels fear, anger, or excitement within oneself, then one should not throw these things away, but they should be processed and neutralized consciously and sustainably because this alone is enough to prevent an imminent upwelling of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. But if a storm of thoughts, feelings, and emotions has already erupted, then it is difficult and extremely hard to calm down with means of self-control. To prevent quarrels, peace must be constantly striven for and practiced. A dispute will never arise if all thoughts, feelings, and actions are always directed in a peaceful way, and if the view of all things, situations, events, behaviors, and values is always peaceful. Then tolerance is practiced, love is spread, and virtues are cultivated. Those who easily make a promise are given little trust. Real true love is a work of knowledge, peace, wisdom, freedom, and harmony. However, man must create and recognize it from the deepest depths of his innermost self. And truly its creation is difficult and laborious and only arises after a long time of struggling with many hardships and efforts. It is not only about a thought-feeling based false love, as it can temporarily become inherent in every villain and false lover. A true love is not only about the love of a fleeting moment, but about true love that rises from the fine spiritual perception realm 
and lasts for the whole span of life and all eternity. Unfortunately, true love is very difficult or impossible for man to distinguish from feigned or falsely thought-created love. Unless there comes a time when true love and affinity prove themselves and allow all doubt, ignorance, falsehood, and insecurity to collapse. To treat a person with contempt means to despise and reject him. But whoever does this will also be despised and rejected. To the same extent that man begins to grasp, understand, and truly live life, he will encounter all its greatest things in greater proximity. True love alone represents a development that man cannot cope with without the deepest cognitions, a virtuous, valuable character, and a good personality. True love actually goes beyond all thought-feeling-based love, which usually exhausts itself only in degenerate emotions. However, if man takes upon himself and endures all the efforts and burdens of teaching in creating true, fine, spiritual-based perception love, instead of losing himself to all that is light, insignificant, false, and reckless infatuation, behind which he hides from the truthful weight of true love and from the actual seriousness of life. Then he will not only gain relief and progress, as well as decisive self-knowledge and self-realization, but also the true, deep, fine spiritual-based perception love, which mocks all thought-feeling-based and thus emotionally charged love. True love is of lifetime permanence and beyond because true love survives death and is still perceptible to even the most distant descendants because it is a significant, neutral, positive, and unifying power of an eternal, all-great nature. In the state of love, peace, and harmony, it is easier to concentrate meditatively than when there is agitation, and concentration can never arise if it is forced. True love is a great teacher, but you have to understand how to attain it through fine spiritual-based perception. A marriage means for everyone to create boundaries and to fit into them, to give to the other the same rights, and to give security to the whole of the community. An important point in life is that people love and respect each other for their short existence on earth as much as they can do it, although some people are nevertheless deceived and disappointed. Sincere love should still be given, even if the love of one's neighbor is not believed. And this should not be done simply out of weakness, such as when a person is worshipped, adored, and glorified, but should be done out of a sense of duty and conviction. To give and reciprocate sincere love is virtuous and a spiritually consciousness-based duty and strength while nurturing or reciprocating hatred, envy, discord, and strife is weakness and selfishness. Only the person who really lives and has actual encounters with people can experience whether true love, compassion, reverence, and humanity are present in him. True love is the center and comprehensiveness of all existence, therefore also in creation and in man. From the center as well as from the encompassing, true love expands and weaves pulsatingly through all existence. And if man makes true love his own, he will gain harmony, tranquility, joy, peace, and freedom within himself and will also realize and live out these values outwardly for fellow human beings. 
and in this sense, as well as in the gathering of knowledge and wisdom, he will not go wrong in any direction. Since true love, which springs from the Gemut and fine spiritual-based perception, is in the center and in the comprehensiveness of all existence, so everything is balanced by it. Consequently, an exaggeration or neglect never appears in any way. It also never avoids anything and never loses anything. The true love of spirit creational nature, as it is given in the gamut of the spirit form of every human being, originally anchored in the creation itself, can be experienced through the material consciousness and the psyche. It remains the core and embrace of the entire existence of man. All other manifold life forms and existences on earth as well as in the entire universal space. True love is life itself. It rounds the course of all things, all lives, the world, the universe, and universal consciousness itself, balancing and realizing all that is good and positive. Only a deep understanding as well as real love and true humanity allow man to act without violence.